Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, we are live once again out here on Dawah with Daniel. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Before we begin, before we say anything, we, we begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful, and peace and salutations be upon His last upon our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yusuf, what's going on, my friend? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Everything is blessed over here, and for you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I can't complain. Can't complain. Glad to, glad to have you on. Glad to see all the brothers and sisters in the comment section. Glad to have all the people who are watching on TikTok as well. Everyone watching on TikTok, guys, come and watch on YouTube if you if you may, if you will. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to go through some of these comments. Wa alaikum salam. Muslim Ninja. MashaAllah. Good to see you. Yes, this hoodie was a gift. Alhamdulillah. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. I love it. Alhamdulillah. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Buck. Good to see you as always. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm watching a lot of people in the comments on TikTok. Brother Styles, good to see you. Mashallah. Alaikum salam. Good to see you. Good to see you. I love, I'm loving all the brothers and sisters who are tuning in. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, yes, I I I, I realize that uh, uh, Junie is busy. Yeah, I, I get you. Yeah, you're not. You're. I, I confused you with someone else at one point, but uh, forgive me. Forgive my. Uh, forgive my confusion. All right, let's see here. We're going to wait a few minutes, inshallah, let the stream fill up, and then we will get to uh, the interrogation, as I like to call it. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to uh, the awesome uh, Q&A with the brother, inshallah. All right. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to go through these. Yeah, Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good to be live. Someone said, have you been to Lebanon? I have not been to Lebanon. I have been to Palestine many, many times, but I have not been to Lebanon. Uh, I wouldn't mind going to Lebanon, though. Honestly, honestly any Muslim country, I'd be happy to visit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, why come to Look forward to hearing all the uh, mashallah, mashallah. It's gonna be fun, inshallah. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. I'm just going through these comments, mashallah. Yusuf, so tell me, uh, was this uh, how, how, how was this time for you, by the way? Was it a bad time, good time? What do you think? Oh, no, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a great time, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's su it's Sunday for me, and I have no clients today, no class. So alhamdulillah, I'm I'm, I'm good. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. yeah, Sundays for me are actually half busy and half not busy. In the morning, it's pretty free, but in the, in the afternoon, it gets pretty hectic. So that's why I uh, yeah. in the uh, uh, what do you call it in the morning time. Uh, by the way, guys, fun fact, fun fact. Inshallah, bi idnillah. We have some very, we have uh, some, uh, well, uh, along with some of the amazing reverts we, uh, we have on the stream, alhamdulillah. Later on, not today, but later on in some coming weeks, inshallah, we have some very, very, very well known guests, inshallah, who might possibly be making an appearance, inshallah. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Stay tuned. But shh, 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 just, you never heard me say that, all right? Just don't worry about that. Don't worry about that for now. All right. Uh, everyone watching on TikTok, by the way, I want you guys to all come to the YouTube stream. Dabo over dunya, come join on YouTube. Or Alhamdulillah, let's grow the numbers here. Let's see how many people we can get watching here. Alhamdulillah, we'll give it another maybe two minutes, inshallah, and then we will get started. God willing. Inshallah. Okay. Juni says, go to Bangladesh and live on a tea field in si uh, Silhet. Huh. Interesting. You know, I'm not really someone who drinks tea, but I feel like if you, yeah, you know, you know what, I, I might have to get into it if I if I end up living somewhere like that. Uh, I, I don't, I'm never drinking coffee though. I mean, not 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 making it a habit at least. Um, we do have coffee bean here in California though. Uh, let's see here. Okay, do you think Adam and Islam contradicts evolution? If not, how so? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's just the thing is people confuse what evolution means. So evolution just means change over time. We have no issue with that. Uh, Darwin's theory of evolution? Yes, it does. Hundred percent. Hundred percent contradicts that. But evolution per se is just change over time. As Muslims, we don't deny that per se. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, okay, from TikTok, mashallah, tabarakallah. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, El Neo, subhanAllah, good to see you. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you. May Allah reward you for your moderation and for all your time and effort. All right. All right, Brother Yusuf, you ready to get uh, get things underway? Inshallah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, 
Uh, bear with me just a moment, actually. I'm going to, everyone on TikTok, let me just one second, because I actually have the list of questions on my phone, but now I'm going, I'm live on TikTok on my phone. So give me one second to transfer them to my computer. <laughs> one second, everyone on TikTok, just give me one second, just, just five seconds. Uh, subhanAllah. Oh, are you in a classroom? Oh, yeah. It's always easy for me to just be at the school. <laughs> MashaAllah, it's about a cola. You, you know how it is as a student, like you're, oh, you're always in Hundred percent, but I, I I can't just like walk into a classroom and just take. Well, actually, I, I have done that. Before. <laughs> I have. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I have done that to myself. All right. Alhamdulillah, my school is very quiet on the weekends. Yeah. So if you oh, need yeah, to I'm study sure. or anything, yeah. Yeah, good. yeah. That I can. I can understand that. All right. All right. Beautiful. There we go. All right. Go ahead and open up these questions. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So now, Yusuf, you good to go? Yes, alhamdulillah. All right, alhamdulillah. So first question I'd like to ask you is, firstly, uh, just tell us, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, background, and any uh, background information you think uh, you think they could they should, they should know. Yeah. So uh, my born name is Logan. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the name Yusuf kind of came to me through the community. It's hmm. uh, what a lot of people just called me. So I kind of adopted that name. So hmm. nine, nine out of 10 people that know me, they call me Yusuf now, Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm 25 years old for the next seven days, inshallah. Um, so yeah, I know life is good. You know, I'm a student, I'm an athlete, I'm very active in life, uh, you know, very outdoorsy guy. And Alhamdulillah, I've always been a religious uh, to be honest, like even within my own family, you know, we're all raised within the same household. Um, yet I was the most religious. And subhanAllah, the craziest thing is that I was actually adopted. So that's how I know Allah really chose me for this uh, path. Because, you know, from a young age, I was always thinking of God, you know. So Alhamdulillah, I've been religious my whole life. Um, and then, you know, of course, the the journey of uh, deen, you could say, and of religion sometimes it's up and down so i've had my ups and downs for sure but alhamdulillah now it's like a skyrocket it's going right up so i'm very grateful yeah um so yeah that's pretty much about me yeah you mind telling the audience uh for example um what uh, religious background you come from yes so i came from an orthodox christian background mm. uh, yeah we grew up you know going to church you know celebrating those you know holidays things like that however that's pretty much where it ended. You know, there wasn't like um, some consistent Bible studies or things like that within the home. Um, you know, questions weren't really being a asked around the religion. It's just kind of like a, a habit. You know, a lot of people in the West, they take the religion of their forefathers, you know. So it's not really a matter of uh, actually being a practicing Christian. It's just like Christian by name, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is like the Orthodox Christian background um, that I came from. Okay. Okay. Cool. Mashallah. So now that's some that's some good background. Alhamdulillah. So now you you sort of answered this a little bit, but I want I want to get into detail. Inshallah. So mm -hmm. if you may, uh, what was your life like before Islam? You'd say, like from start till like I guess till kind of like you first got introduced to Islam. What was it like? Okay, that's a good question. Actually, so. Actually, uh, so I was always very philosophical my whole life. You know, I always pondered. I always thought about things. I didn't just kind of uh, live life uh, like a robot, you know, like I always like to take life into my own hands. So, you know, from a young age, whether it was, you know, living in the farmhouse or, you know, on the army base, it like I had a lot of experiences in my life, alhamdulillah. And to be honest, I always question things and I always, alhamdulillah, even to this day, I have a good imagination. So I always thought about things deeply. Uh, yeah. I was always into sports, uh, you know, love animals, as you can imagine, you know, being raised in a farm. Uh, alhamdulillah, like uh, my childhood was like any other country boy's childhood would be like you could say. Um, and then, you know throughout high school honestly i didn't take education that seriously i i was just you know wanting to live in this dunya as we say you know hanging out with friends and things like this but um yeah like i kind of always had god in the back of my mind um and uh subhanallah 
you know, all the way up until 2019, I was a Christian and uh, I was working really, really hard to be, you know, I tried my best to be a good Christian. And then uh, in late 2019, uh, you know, a sister, one of my old classmates, she kind of planted that seed of Islam in my heart. And then I was kind of just looking in, into it from there. Um, but yeah, we can get into that later, inshallah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You know, it's, uh, it's, you know, I, I gotta be honest, I, I, I like the outdoors, but uh, I always grew up in a normal California suburb. No, uh, <laughs> no open fields around. Well, there were orchards close by, but no, nah, I, I, alhamdulillah, I grew up in a, a very, very uh, suburban lifestyle. Alhamdulillah. Uh, um, yeah, like growing up, like I used to ride dirt bikes with like my grandpa, you know, we'd go hunting with my father. Um, and especially like being raised, like my first few years of my life, I was in the army base. So uh -huh. like being around like heavy machinery, tanks, things like that, it was always so cool to, and fascinating to see. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. I see. Interesting. But yeah, oh. you know what? The city that I live in, which is Ottawa, the capital of uh, Canada, we have so much natural beauty here that like, I can imagine. It's, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it's always a good time for the, you know, <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. I, it's, it's, uh, I will say this, the, that, that's the one thing I would say, is, see, I, I would never move to Canada, but Canada <laughs> does have a lot of open wilderness. I mean, the yes. United States has a lot, but Canada definitely also does too. So probably. Yes. yes I, uh, all right. So here's the question. I, here's, here's, here's one, one of my favorite questions. How were you first introduced to Islam and what was your first impression of Islam and Muslims? So, subhanAllah, I moved to Ottawa in 2008. Um, again, we, we came from, you know, the country, you know, small town lifestyle. There wasn't a single black person in my neighbor, like old town. It was all just white people, you know, like, so I wasn't exposed to a lot of culture, actually. Then, subhanAllah, in 2008, when I moved to uh, Ottawa, my neighborhood was all people from, uh, like, Arab countries, like Lebanon, Libya, Afghanistan, things like this. And you know they love to play soccer and so did i so you know as, as a kid i'm always with these brothers you know playing soccer things like that even their mother invited me to their home you know many times we had like nice dinners and things like that um so from a young age you know i'm 25 now so i was maybe like nine or ten back then so from a young age i was uh you know was always surrounded by muslims like all of my friends were muslims subhanallah but the thing is i never really thought about islam at all uh, back then i was just kind of surrounded by arabs i didn't really think of religion that much at that age um but looking back in hindsight i can really realize like uh these guys were like 10 steps ahead of us you know like of, of all like the christians and the, the you know the non-believers just because just for the family values that they shared you know subhanallah it's a really uh, beautiful thing actually um, so I always kind of had like a good impression of Muslims, uh, you know, they're fasting Ramadan. I'm asking these questions again. I didn't really understand, but you know, I was always curious. And then it's crazy because like for years, I never really thought about Islam and I never thought about people's religion. I just saw people as people and subhanAllah in like, you know, I think it was November or December of 2019 um i was taking a course at my my college and what happened was um very very busy classroom but there was one seat available and it was beside a sister uh subhanallah as soon as we met i remember yeah. you told me about this you, you mentioned this i remember yes yes exactly as soon as i sat down beside her we just like became like we had a good connection alhamdulillah and uh, actually a palestinian sister actually and um I don't know, just by the way that her, it's one thing when you have Muslim brothers around you. <laughs> it's one thing when you have Muslim brothers around you, but it's different when you have a sister to kind of like plant that seed. Because, you know, we're men, like, we're obviously going to be, you know, intrigued by women. It's just how it is. And just seeing this girl, you know, with the hijab, just her mannerisms, uh, just things like this. To be honest, it, it made me think, like, Makes sense. what what is this Islam, you know? And... Uh, that's actually what inspired me to buy my first Quran. You know, she just wow. just wanted to learn more about Islam through her. So, Allah Mubarak, you know, I, I, I wish her the best, you know. <laughs> Masha'Allah, Tabarakallah. All right, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. You know, it's funny, actually, just a side point. 
Um, I find this is a common trend. A lot of people, when they get into their university years, is what oh, who don't people who didn't grow up in a Muslim background. It's usually when they get to university. That's when they get, <laughs> they get to. That's when they're really exposed to Islam the most. It seems yes, like. Yes. And I under, it, it makes sense. I understand. Um, all right. So, just to be clear, your first introduction to Islam was sitting next to a Palestinian Muslim sister at school yeah. at university. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just got a message. All right. Uh, now, well, here's the thing. Well, okay. Before, so my, my next question was going to be, what kept you from accepting Islam? But first, I want I want to I want to ask, like, what was the journey? This is kind of like a, a question beforehand. Mm. What was it like going? Or how how did you go from just being first introduced to Islam to actually considering Islam and actually? So you mentioned you bought your first Quran. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And take us through that journey of okay, being first introduced to Islam and I guess buying your first Quran to actually accepting Islam or even like really c considering accepting Islam. Okay, yeah, that's a really good question. And you know, looking back in hindsight, I think uh, you know the first initial, uh, let's say, like when I met this classmate, this is what inspired me to buy the Quran because you know I was curious to learn more about Islam. And this was in 2019, late. And then, subhanAllah, I think we had COVID here in, I think it was March of 2020. So just a few months after, you know, at this point, I was looking through the Quran, uh, but I wasn't really reading it, like, uh, seriously. And then, subhanAllah, what happened was, as soon as COVID happened, we lost school, we lost our jobs, we're on, uh, what's it called, quarantine, like, we couldn't leave our homes, anything like that. So I had so much free time, you know, to think. and. You know, I was like trying to get back into my original faith. You know, I'm like, so I started looking back into the Bible. I actually bought a uh, NIV uh, translation or edition of the Bible. Basically, you read like set amount of pages per day and you'll have the whole Bible completed within three months. So I was really on that. Uh, you know, I, every night I was watching, you know, Christians evangelize on YouTube because it was just fascinating, you know, to hear like these um people you know tell their stories i mean like the same thing when we watch dawa it's 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 fascinating in a sense you know um and then what happened was the churches uh, reopened all the masjids still uh, reopened you know places of worship etc and i uh i went back to the church and it was a it's, subhanallah the funniest thing so at this time i didn't have a car and the closest Orthodox church to my home was the Ethiopian Ethiopian Orthodox Church. I was really the only white guy there, but you know, great people. They all accepted me in, no problem. And I was there for about nine months, give or take. And to be honest with you, you know, you're in a house of worship, so you're gonna feel some kind of energy. You know, that's great and all. But the more I'm watching evangelization videos on YouTube, especially when they're uh, you know having conversations with muslims i'm starting to like have some questions you know that just didn't make any sense it's you know in christianity there's a kind of a blind faith that that they that they follow um and so you know after months and months and months in the church again you know there's you know the singing the dancing people just like in tears like you know saying thank you jesus this that and the next and then my uh, ethiopian co-worker at the time because we were working like a job uh, you probably know it because you live in the united states it's called u-haul so of course there's yeah of course there, we're still working during covid because people are going to have to move regardless um and so he's the one that in, you know brought me to that church in the first place and so he was the first chain of uh questioning that i had i'm asking him questions about like the trinity why we're going to believe that Jesus is God when he himself never said that he was God. Uh, why do we pray to him when he says to pray to the Father, God? These kinds of questions. And it's kind of weird. Like it's a it's like a it's like a passive aggressive thing that they have. Like he, he he would start berating me, like saying, you know, you just have to have faith in Jesus, say thank you, Jesus, this, that, and the next. And to be honest, like I told you for my whole life, I always questioned things, I always pondered. So for me to have to ask questions about something that doesn't make sense to me, and the only answer I get is just trust in Jesus, this, that, and the next. Like, <laughs> I don't have that much blind faith, let's be honest with you. So, you know, I'm, I'm just like 
you know, in the church, there's all the singing, the dancing, people in tears. And I'm just like, I felt so out of place, to be honest. Like, I felt like I'm like looking at myself. I'm like a third person. Like, what are you doing here? So that was it for me. I stopped going to the church altogether. And I had zero religion for like, uh, I, I would say probably about two months. I didn't even read the Quran. I, I, I put the Bible in the bookshelf and that was it. And subhanAllah. I don't know. You probably know this brother. He's a da'wah expert. Uh, Shaykh Uthman ibn Farooq. Maybe you know him. This brother, man, his da'wah, I'm telling you. I haven't met him in person. It's been a while, but I have met him. Ah, Allahu Mubarak. Yeah, he, inshallah, I hope to meet him someday. Because uh, I'm telling you, his da'wah was the greatest tool that brought me to understanding Islam. Because again, I, I lost contact with that sister. And, you know, all I had was YouTube and, you know, Googling things. But I'll tell you, uh, also, the brother Muhammad Ali from Dawa Wise, another great brother for Dawa. Um, these guys, these these two guys, really helped me understand. And also the big guy, uh, the Warner. These three guys, sorry. Yeah. No, Amazing. basically, you know, no, Subhanallah. Yeah, no. The you said the big. I'm like, <laughs> big guy. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is definitely a tall guy. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, you, know, you know, you know something actually funny. Actually, um, one thing I see about the Warner. And also, also Shaykh Uthman as well. Their DAO is pretty simple, if you ask me, right? It is, um, yeah. Uh, how to say, their, their DAO is very much catered to the layman, if that makes sense. Like, you know, just yeah. keeping the arguments simple, keeping it like, like the arguments are very relatable. Talking about, okay, you believe in the Bible. Okay, you know what? Well, this exactly. Bible has contradictions and errors. Oh, you know, uh, you know, oh, look, you're a Christian, you worship Jesus. Well, we don't worship Jesus. We worship the God Jesus worshipped. You know, oh, you're exactly. an atheist. Well, we believe that, you know, this universe didn't come from nothing. It was created, right? It didn't come, it didn't pop into existence from nothing. It needed a creator. The, the, the arguments are very, how to say, they're, they're, they're very easy to consume. I've met people actually in my personal life, actually, who were kind of fell off the dean, but actually watched these things like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, these simple things, <laughs> just, just the, these simple logical sparks really recharge your iman. Yes, life. absolutely. So, um, so yeah, just watching their videos honestly helped me to understand uh, Islam and actually helped me to understand Christianity too a lot more. Because mm. uh, you know they're having these, as you say, they're having questions with Christians, atheists, agnostics, you know, uh, Hindus, all the case. And to be honest, like um, it just, I realized like the more and more I was thinking about Islam, I was always a Muslim. As we know in Islam, we have a thing called fitra. And that's the reality is that I told you my whole life, I was always religious. You know, I had my ups and downs for sure. But I never once prayed to Jesus. I always prayed to God and I always thought of God. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah, he gave me that clarity from a young age. Like I never was, you know, blindly just Jesus, this, Jesus, that. You know, that's that's not the right way to go about it. And um, Alhamdulillah, so... I, this is basically how I understood to be Islam was the, for one, it was the truth and that I was always a Muslim. So, cause I realized like my inherent beliefs just align with the principles of Islam. And, you know, I'll tell you the most appealing thing to Islam, I think for, for me and for everybody is the, the fact that it's the only true monotheistic religion, which inherently just makes the most sense. Like, let's be honest. Um, cause it, it's clear, you know, it's, it's, there's no confusion. You know, alhamdulillah. So that's pretty much how I started to, you know, my journey of understanding Islam. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'll tell you, Dawah is, is an amazing tool. You know, I love the work you're doing uh, and all those other brothers I mentioned, like, uh, inshallah, I hope to give more Dawah in my future. Because uh, subhanAllah is the funniest thing is um, I was only a Muslim for like about four, maybe five months at this time. But at my college, we were doing uh, Islam Awareness Week just last year. And subhanAllah, they, they had me at the Dawah hey, booth. Our university, alhamdulillah, I love it. Yeah, I love it too. And we're going to do it again, inshallah, I think probably during Ramadan, inshallah. Mm. But uh, I was at the Dawah booth because, of course, they wanted to have a revert there. And subhanAllah, I actually gave a brother his shahada in front of like 100 wow. people. Wow. Yeah, so, bro, wow. like. <laughs> it's it's trust me allah has really made this dean easy that, for me that, that must have been an experience bro i have the video i was so nervous i, I was like in front of so many people but inshallah i'm gonna get better and inshallah I'll give many more in, in my life 
Mashallah. <laughs> no, trust me. I, like, like so for example, look, look listen, I, I was born and raised into a Muslim family. I know the Shahada, like the back of my hand. You know? <laughs> yes. Like even in the middle of the Shahada, you're like, Ashadu, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's like, bro, <laughs> it's like, bro you, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul. Uh, like, you have to, like, you, I know, I know. You have to like, like you catch yourself making mistakes, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah. Nervous, subhanAllah. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, you know, it, it's, may, may Allah forgive us all. But alhamdulillah. Amen, amen. Uh, all right, all right. So, you know, you mentioned to me that, that, that it's funny actually. Uh, so let me ask you this. So, the remember we brought up the shawarma. I think I, everyone, everyone yeah. can see. That. Everyone yes, can see yes. the, the the thumbnail. The thumbnail <laughs> of this video is a shawarma. There's a shawarma sandwich there. So, yeah. why, why don't you tell people the context behind that? <laughs> So subhanallah. Okay, so this was in June of 2021. Yeah. And at this point, I was reading the Quran. I've already given up uh, on Christianity. I, I knew the fitra and I was watching dawah every single night at this point. Like I'm telling you, I didn't have cable, nothing. I'm just on YouTube watching dawah, dawah, dawah. Alhamdulillah. And yeah. so one day I had a service technician job. So I'm just going around different properties throughout my city. And I was in a, a neighborhood that we have called Canada. It's a pretty suburban area. And I'm like, man, I'm hungry. So I'm looking for food. I check on the map. I see shawarma. I'm like, okay, that's set. So I go to the place. That's all you need, man. That's all you, you need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get some potatoes on the side with the garlic dip and you're good, man. That's all you need. <laughs> the, fries, yeah. the fries inside the, the shawarma. Oh, oh okay, okay. Maybe that's a California thing. No. I'll tell you. That, that's a Palestinian thing. What do you mean, <laughs> Palestinian thing? Oh, uh, okay, okay. Are you kidding me? In the streets of Nablus, Ramallah, and Jericho, where they put the they put the French fries in the in the shawarma, man. That's uh, how that's I'm going to have to try that, inshallah. You yes. know, a quick side note is that Ottawa is the shawarma capital of the of Canada. Imagine really? that. Okay. Yeah. Well, inshallah, like, you'll have to see. If I ever visit, if I ever visit Canada, I'm going to remember that. That's okay. Yeah, inshallah. Let me know. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for food. I find shawarma and I'm like, okay, alhamdulillah, let me go there. So I go there and it's actually a Palestinian owned uh, restaurant. Naturally. Yes, of course. And so there's uh, three brothers and a father. Inshallah, I'm going to have to go back and see them sometime soon. Like I haven't been there since, you know, I think they'd be very happy to see me. But basically what happened was, um, you know, I go inside to the restaurant. I mean, I'm a pretty open guy. I'm not just one of those, like I said, I'm not a robot. I'm not just going to order my food and let them serve to me. And then I'm out. No, I'm saying, how are you doing today? And, and going on from there. Yeah. So I'm telling them, I'm like, you know, I've been looking into Islam. It makes a lot of sense to me. And they're like, you know, they kept asking me some more questions. And then the father, he comes out from the back because the brothers are all excited. The father comes out from the back. And right. he's like, you know, asking me a couple more questions. And then the father's like, okay, are you ready? I'm like, ready? He's like, repeat after me. And so I did my shahada right then and there in the restaurant. SubhanAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't kidding when that shawarma led to shahada. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Oh, and that's the thing, you know, Guys, the funniest shahada and shawarma. What else do you need? What I'm else do you saying, need? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, and, and you know, subhanAllah, the funniest thing too is like, as you know, as men, the quickest way to our heart is through our stomach. So Allah, he he, he knew what he was doing, putting me there that day. SubhanAllah. That's so what you're saying is we should start, <laughs> we should start bringing food to the Dawah table. You know, that's actually smart. InshaAllah, InshaAllah. Some falafel, some... Uh, What's the tahini and you're good to go? They're gonna be like, wow, wow, subhanAllah, this is what being Muslim comes with. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, yeah. No, no, look, alhamdulillah. No, definitely it's it's uh, actions of hospitality like that, honestly, are like a very <laughs> no, alhamdulillah, being being very uh how to say, um being very hospitable, being very yeah. welcoming, being very, you know, just just overall you're like we've mentioned this many times, your character and your demeanor go they go a long way when 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 giving dawah to Islam and when people accept Islam as well because obviously someone comes across as rude or you know inhospitable it, like how how is one gonna accept Islam like that how you know it's just naturally yeah, of course yeah uh, no, I agree so, uh, alhamdulillah all right so now well here's the thing you actually so you kind of answered this already but I want you to emphasize so the next question I was gonna ask is what if, what eventually led you to accept Islam? But the thing is, though, is you mentioned earlier, you mentioned a few things. So aside from the shawarma, put the shawarma sandwich to the side. Uh, 
you mentioned earlier how simple Islam is, its theology. Yes. What, what, yes. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, look, here's the thing. There's no confusion. Like, for example, in Christianity, I just kept seeing so much hypocrisy. Like, you know, astaghfirullah, I don't want to, like, talk on, you know, other people's uh, deeds or whatever. But, like, the thing is, like, especially here in the West, like, you see the sisters, like, the Christian sisters, they wear the cross, but then they're wearing, like, the most revealing clothing ever. It's, like, it's such hypocrisy because if you look at the most beloved woman of Christianity, Mary, Miriam, you know, she herself was a veiled woman. So I just don't understand, like, where, where this is, this is, uh, the, there's a confusion. And then the brothers, for example, they have, like, you know, the Christian tattoos all over their body, but they're drinking, smoking, doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, the craziest thing, too, is, like, in Christianity, the second commandment is worship no idols except for the Father himself. I'm just paraphrasing. Yet every single church we have, there's the cross, there's the, the glass that has all these just the depictions you have statues here and there it's just like i just it, it felt like a cult in a, in a way like i don't want to say it like that like i'm not trying to be rude to you know, christians that believe what they believe but like it's like a cult honestly you just have to blindly follow and despite all of what the bible itself says which should be our ruling no we're gonna have these depictions we're gonna have these crosses and etc even like a, i know you're speaking from an orthodox christian perspective but even for example the protestants or even you know the, the you know the human being you know the images of jesus right the the very i'll say what even if you had no actual image or physical idol in front of you the fact that you're worshiping a human being is enough even if you don't have an idol of the human being if in your head your intention is to worship uh for example a bird or a tree it doesn't matter if you have a bird or tree in front of you the fact that you have that intention is more than sufficient 100 percent, and that's the thing is like um like there was just too much hypocrisy for me and that's what like you know looking back in hindsight looking at my friends that i grew up with you know looking at my classmate and and then uh, you know watching dawah and, and learning more about islam i'm like this just makes logical sense there's no confusion you know you cover yourself just as all the other prophets did uh you know you pray to the god himself there's no confusion there and you know, and then one more thing I want to tell you is like the Orthodox, they have a different Bible from the Protestants and they both have a different Bible from the Catholics. Yeah. And then, then there's different editions here and there. And then even the Jehovah's they, it's so funny. I was talking to some Jehovah's like a month ago. Uh, just, I, I can get into that later inshallah. But the point is like, why, if you're a Christian, why can you guys not agree on anything? That's the sad thing. And that's why I love about Islam. You know, we're not going to have to, like, I don't have to go in, like, obviously they're Shia and the, you know, but the point is, if you're a Muslim, you're going to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. And, and the all Muslims read the same Quran. We have the exact, all, exactly, all, Muslims, have exactly. the same, all Muslims read a Quran with 114 chapters. With, yeah. You know, it's, yes, you know, exactly. and all of us, you will never find a Muslim reading, uh, for example, how to say, you'll never find a Muslim reading Surah Al-Fatiha with three extra verses or four extra verses. Exactly. Or you'll never find, yeah, yeah. for example, uh, you know, a Quran with 150 for 150 chapters or 120 chapters or however exactly. different, different of chapters. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. exist. And well, that's the beautiful thing about it too, is that, like I said, the Christians, they can't even uh, agree on like the simple of things of some like Jehovah, they don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe God, uh, Jesus himself. Is true, to, uh, to be intellectually honest though, I wouldn't use the Jehovah's Witnesses as like, <laughs> As like the same way we have our we have the Qadianis. I mean, they're they're a very small fringe sect, but we could, however, I, I would definitely uh, you know appeal more to like the bigger sects of Christianity. So, for right, example, right. the Catholics and Protestants, the two biggest, uh, and I guess the Orthodox as well, they all have different Bibles. They all have different yes. Bibles, right? Yeah. They you know it's it's that that's that on its own. The fact that they all they have different canons of scripture, they can't even agree on what's scripture, what's not. Exactly. It's huge. These aren't small. We're not talking like, okay, Mormons, small fringe. Okay, Jehovah's Witnesses, fine, small fringe. We have our small fringe. That's fine. But you'll okay. never find a Shari. You, 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 for, for example, the Shia and the Sunnis, collectively, overall, we all read the, the same Quran. 114 yes, yes. chapters, you know, I forget how many verses, but nonetheless, right? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too, is like, again, there's so much confusion on that side. But at least for us, Every every Muslim is gonna say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Abdul Rasul. So this is the most important thing to remember, you know. 
like there's there's not any confusion you know so alhamdulillah yeah, alhamdulillah so for islam on tiktok said i'm lost well if i'm lost you can come and help me find my way come on come on to youtube the youtube stream uh in a few minutes and uh, i hope you can help me find my way and if not and if you're not willing to do that then get lost all right <laughs> uh okay oh here's a good one so how has your life changed since you accepted islam well um <laughs> in the physical uh appearance it's so funny um people that knew me before and they see me now they say there's so much nur in my face so i mean that's one thing I, if you're a good muslim you're gonna have that nur. so alhamdulillah yeah, that's it yeah <laughs> yeah but what i can say in general though um look i don't understand why a lot of people they're gonna say islam is so stringent why it's so you have to do follow this follow that they make it seem like it's so hard but to be honest with you the most beautiful thing about islam and like how it's uh, changed my life for the better is that you know i have guidelines i won't even call it rules i have guidelines of which uh you know life is easy right. and clear for me to follow and so i think it's just easy you know like life is good like uh you know i'm eating the best food that i can have for my body and as you know uh it's a, it's a, it's um i don't know if this is a sunnah or if it's just a it's an obligation but you know staying in shape you know you like you spoke with brother jamaya like you 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 know very well like uh sports actually it is a sunnah you know before you're married to be fasting playing sports being competitive this, this kind oh, of thing they fit, they fit 100%. yeah so like it's a very it's an important uh it's a it's a good way of life and like i said life is very clear for me now you know um i make my du'as i do my salah i you know i treat others how i want to be treated i'm helping out with the community volunteering fasting etc so for me it just gave my life so much clarity because again as you say as i was mentioning sorry is that even though i was never a robot i never just followed the line of everyone else despite that before islam i was still kind of just you know living life day by day but mm -hmm. now alhamdulillah i'm living my life for the akhirah so it's it's that's important awesome. yeah that, that's a very that's a very good way of putting it subhanallah you know, when you don't have when you don't have the end goal in mind, you're not really what are you working towards? You're just living for the moment, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Which can, which may at times may at times you know because we're human beings might at times feel good at the moment, but yeah. you know every moment ends at some point. Every fun memory, every fun experience ends at some point, and you have yeah. to know what is you. But 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 how to say? If you're not working towards an end goal, you're really working towards nothing. You're moving moving towards nothingness, which ultimately is depressing, right? Yes, I um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. No, look, it's it's basically it's how to say, like you said, it just day by day. Basically, each person is living from one Friday to the next. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, yeah. From one Friday night to the next Friday night, it's just you know get through this week so it can get through the weekend and then get you know it's. it's <laughs> no, it, it's not honestly it, it's a very sad cycle if that's all there is one has to well all that it, all that, that's the only motivation one has to has it some, at the end of the day yeah. well and there's a famous song in the west it's called i believe it's called uh living for the weekend you know and it's like it's exactly what you just said you know everybody's yeah, just yeah, living yeah, for the I'll, weekend I'll, I'll, Oh, man, Yusuf, you have no idea the Haram police are going to be kicking down my door at any moment just because you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I, I, I should lock my door. You know, not. <laughs> you know, you know look, look, but honestly, though, if you think about it, bro, it's like people just live through the weekdays just to experience the weekend, and then when the weekend's over, just repeat the cycle again and again. Exactly. And again. Exactly. Honestly, that's that's it's not like a robot. Ex know? Very well said. Just a robot. Just like a robot. Yeah. Uh. Uh, look at that there you go yeah mashallah barakallah <laughs> i'm just joking they're just messing around um uh, okay now here's a question i have for you what advice would you give to any muslims who are watching this perhaps any muslims are watching whether it's for their da'wah or, or or any piece of advice that you think is beneficial in any way shape or form for any muslims who are watching this it's a very good question um do you mean like reverts or just in general it could be reverts it could be or uh however how about this how about this maybe one how about one general and one specifically for reverts yeah so for reverts i would say um 
because Allah chose us for the path in the first place. So there must be some yeah. level of, you know, there must be a good imam. You must, you know, have tawakkul. You must understand, like, you know, the plan is the way it's supposed to be. I would say do your best to surround yourself with good brothers or, in you know, good sisters. Um, ask questions as many as you have. Volunteer as much as you can, uh, whether it's with the masjid or, like, you know, a charitable organization. Um, I think it's really important to involve yourself with the community. And of course, you know, learn Arabic, go to Quran classes. Uh, every masjid has them. And, and just like I say, just like keep the deen close to your heart, actually. And because as we know, you know, a lot of people, they're going to have ups and downs. And especially if you're a revert, you're going to come from a different life. You're going to have friends that might want to pull you back. Uh, don't allow it. Just make dua, you know, you know, whatever it is in your life, pray istikhara, you know, just have that, you know, the trust in Allah's plan, you know, tawakkul. It just keep it in the back of your mind at all times. And um, yeah, just try your best to surround yourself with good people. Um, <laughs> for example, almost every night, and I know it's so funny, you probably wouldn't approve because you're not a big tea drinker. But every night after Isha, I, I link up with a few brothers. We go for tea at this uh, Egyptian place. And Asha. this is like tea time for the brothers, you know? It's, you know, yeah. Allah, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's, a, it's always a good time to Are you guys drinking reflect. tea or, are you guys drinking tea or spilling tea? Well, yeah. let's just say I try not to wear white thobes when we go there too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, look, look, honestly... I mean, Make a very good. I I love that point you just made right there, especially in that example you gave as well. You really are defined by the people you surround yourself with. Subhanallah. Yeah. Um, you know the and of course you know we keep keep overall good ties with people around you, but the people you really surround yourself with, you really go out of your way to surround yourself with. Subhanallah. Those are the people who define who you are. Subhanallah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know it's it's and especially I mean for most for everyone for everyone, but. I can especially see it for, for reverts as well, because reverts will come from obviously a non-Muslim background yeah. and they might have a lot of non-Muslim friends, which again is understandable, right? There are a lot of non-Muslims I'm on very good terms with, of course, yeah. but the people who you spend your most time with are the people you're going to be most become most like, yeah. whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Right. Um, I think there's actually, um, um, I believe there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where basically some on the day of judgment will say, like, I wish I didn't take that person as a friend. He dra Basically, he dragged me to hell. Yes, yes. I yes. wish I never took that person as a friend. He, he led me astray, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what the, what, and this is for, this. by the way, this is just as much for Muslims as well. Muslims can go astray just as easy as a revert, as a, a born Muslims, I should say, can go easily astray just as easily as, as a reverts can, right? If you pick the wrong crowd, you're picking the wrong future. You're picking the wrong path. Right, and the wrong path obviously is going to lead to the wrong destination. Um, let me ask you this: another one. What advice would you give for any non-Muslims watching this? Yeah, so non-Muslims should, uh, you know, understand that Islam is a non-compulsory religion. We're not going to, you know, knock on your door with, <laughs> with our Qurans and some falafel and shawarma and try to bring you to our side it's not about that uh, should we try that though i'm not gonna lie shawarma, shawarma and falafel can go <laughs> inshallah who knows yeah but um the point i'm trying to say is that like islam is there for you to accept and it's it's there to clear up all the confusion from all the other uh you know books that have been tainted like the quran i'm saying and the reality is is that um if you if you're an honest person, you'll look at Islam with an open heart and you'll see that, you know, this is a beautiful religion and it's not like what the media wants you to believe it is like. Um, and for example, you know, my my best advice is like, you know, have an open heart to understanding what Islam is. Don't try to put your ego aside, essentially what I'm trying to say. Don't think, oh, because I grew up this way, my, my forefathers, they're Christian or they're Jewish or Hindu, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're Look, the only one in the grave is you. So you can't do things pleasing these people around you, this dunya, your, your family, whatever the case. Look at Islam from uh, you know, an open heart with an open book, let's say, and uh, 
you know it's not hard to 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 understand islam for example you can watch dawah like i did you can ask questions to classmates like i did you know um surround yourself with good people it's so easy to go to a masjid like you don't have to be a muslim you know so many people they they get so scared when they see a big masjid they think you know if i go there i'm going to be judged if anything you going there asking questions as a non-muslim is is a blessing in and of itself like people are going to treat you well so i would say just like you know think about where your stance is for your religion why you think the way that you do or even non-believers you know a great analogy is um you know a cell phone you see a cell phone in front of you does it just be created out of nothing no there has to be a designer there had to be a creator etc so if the whole universe around us is as vast as it is much more complex than a phone you got to think obviously this is from a designer so yeah just you know ask questions you know have an open heart don't have any prejudice in your mind about islam and you'll see the true beauty of islam inshallah you know may allah guide everyone to the to the straight path i mean oh, very beautifully said very beautifully said uh this is like a little bonus question i i i, uh, I like to i I, uh, I like to ask to our guests um what message do you have for any islamophobes watching this or maybe like some anti-islam polemicists right Let's not give names, but you know, you know the kind of people I'm talking about. Uh, for me? Yeah. It, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Who else am I talking to, man? Who else oh, am I sorry, sorry. I thought you meant for the the chat. Bro, you know what that was like? You know, like one news reporters <laughs> like over to you, Becky. <laughs> yes. So today, what happened was this fire truck flipped. Like it's just there's like that okay, pause. Yeah. That pause. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I'm like, uh, is it taking over? It's taking a while to transfer over. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, honestly, like what, what what advice, if any, would you give to any Islamophobes or anti-Islam preachers who are on either on TikTok, YouTube, yeah. or on social media? Good what question. Would, yeah. Would I would say? say I would ask I would tell them, no, I want to ask them, I'd say, what benefit does it give you having hatred in your heart? And just leave it at that. Because seriously, look, there's so many people that are so miserable because they just think about well, here's why they don't practice gratitude if you practice gratitude you're going to see all the blessings around you the small things the big things and everything in between but for example like if you always look as muslims we don't even have time let alone it's not in our deen to you know hate others or be you know prejudiced towards certain groups but like you know non-believers for example or islamophobes they're just like they 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 go around and see a Muslim, like a sister with hijab or a brother with a big beard and the kufi or something wearing the thobe. And they're just, as soon as they see them, they feel disgusted. They're like, oh, this guy, he's that and this or whatever. But like, seriously, what does it benefit you having this hatred in your heart? Look, especially, alhamdulillah, living in Ottawa. I told you from a young age, I was exposed to culture. Whereas where I was before, you had fields, horses, and you had other white people there is no culture in between but <laughs> you know, like, white folk i like <laughs> exactly and no shawarma unfortunately <laughs> oh, no yes 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 but what that i'm trying to say is like that's the problem and that's right there that's the issue 100 percent. um but what i'm saying is like you know from a young age i was exposed to so much culture so i never saw skin but like you know there's people that are like racist or you know islamophobes but it's like what do you get out of having this in your heart towards another person like alhamdulillah ottawa is probably the most diverse i i can't say it's like statistically but from what my experience i've been to other country uh, other cities like through the united states and and uh, canada and to be honest i think ottawa is like a hub for multiculturalism mm -hmm. and that's the beautiful thing if you just go around hating one group because of their skin or one group because of their religion you're just going to live a miserable life your 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 thought process will be so cloudy you'll have like you know thunderstorm in your brain at all times but if you just look at people like other human beings especially like we don't even have like of course islamophobia but like i think it's a it's, it's also a problem with like you know people hating arabs or people hating the indians or people hating black people etc like look at history it doesn't get you anywhere it just makes you like your own house is going to be all messed up and you know a beautiful uh uh, a phrase that I heard from a modern day philosopher 
Um, I won't say his name because I don't like a lot of the things he says, especially, uh, you know, with what's going on in Gaza and everything like that. But yeah. one thing he did say that I, I do appreciate is that before you go out into the world and try to fix it, fix your own house first. Simple things like making your bed, keeping your house clean, keeping the dishes cleaned and, and, and put away. But for example, if your house is in disarray and you try to go around changing the world, oh, you know, this must yeah exactly this you know this muslim that this muslim that it's like like your own house is completely messed up so who are you to judge anybody else you know so i think we weren't supposed I, to tell anyone man it was our, it was supposed to be our little secret Ugh. i'm gonna get to, <laughs> i'm gonna get to it soon inshallah 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 but that's what i'm saying like not to go off on a tangent but like i would say like for any like you know islamophobe or xenophobe whatever the case or racist for that matter ask yourself what benefit does it have you you know keeping this hatred in your heart like is it really hard to turn the you know a christian saying is turn your cheek if you see something you don't like is it really so hard for you to just turn your cheek and just leave it at that Khalas, it's done it's not affecting you but that's the problem like you know especially in this new age with social media and whatnot oh man there's so much comparison going on in this world and it's just like yeah. just gotta look at your own house first as i was just mentioning and I think that's the most important thing to, to say to any Islamophobes. You know, intellectually, I would say, look, 100% I agree with you. But the thing is, intellectually, I would I, I think I know why. Because they do benefit. They do benefit from this hate or spreading this hate and also spreading these false narratives of Islam. Because that's what bullies do. They have to bring, they can't raise themselves up. They realize how low they are. They have to bring <laughs> others. The only way they can raise their rank is if they lower everyone else's, right? That's true. That's true, right? yeah. So, for example, you know, when one is stuck realizing that their religion is intellectually deficient, right? When one realizes their concept of God, for example, makes no sense. Your concept of God makes no sense. Your religion, for example, gives no actual way of life and how to live your life, right? It gives you no guidance. When you realize, for example, that the scripture you follow is corrupted, and even your own scholars are admitting to this, what's the only alternative? When you worship a man, a walk, a finite, dependent human being who's walking around, eating, sleeping, you know, pooping, who was born, who died, when you have, when you have to justify these kind of things, you will go to the ends of the earth to try to do what? Bring others down to feel your exactly. make yourself feel better, right? Yeah. So. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it, you ask a good question. What benefit do you get from this hate? But I can see, but that, that is their motive. That really is their yeah. motive. Yeah. Of course, if that is really your motive, that's you shouldn't take it out on Islam. You should take it out on what you yourself believe, right? You should yeah. assess your own beliefs. If your own beliefs are dependent upon bringing down others, well, then how low of your belief do you believe in that you have to lower everyone else to make yourself feel better? Yeah. And, right? you know, just to touch up on that really quickly is that an important thing to remember is that this is a lot, a, a lot of this has to do with the way people were raised. So you can't necessarily, uh, you know, hate the, like, not, I'm not like from my perspective as a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, it's been easy, but let's say there's somebody saying some Islamophobic things to me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to attack them. Like think in my head, like all oh, this person that I'm just going to feel sorry for them that they were, brought up in a way or programmed in a way to think that the way that they do again that you can only uh, justify so much of course you know you're I still the person i say it's case by case because look there are some yes, people yeah. obviously like for example you grew up in a in a place where there were literally no muslims no not even brown people let alone i mean not all muslims, yeah. are, brown. Not all muslims are brown obviously <laughs> but you know you go a very know you very uh homogenous uh environment if that makes sense right it wasn't yeah, very yeah. You know, you weren't really exposed to much else other than what you yourself were raised with. So yeah. I can, un so, you know, there's some people you can make excuses for, you know, Miskeen, yeah. okay, poor fella. He, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't know any better, but there's yeah. some people up, there's some people out there who genuinely have the prejudices they were brought up with. And there are some people who have preferences for prejudice. Does that makes yeah, sense, right? That's, they, that's prejudice because they prefer prejudice, whether it's for their career, for financial benefit, for, to, to, be, to, yeah. to care about their own beliefs. So I, I would say you have to judge a case by case. Yeah, there's right. some people who don't like Islam, but I'm okay, miskin, may, you know, may Allah guide them. Some mm -hmm. people, miskin, they, they don't, they, they, they're Islamophobes. Like, listen, may Allah guide them, but I got no respect for them.